Revolution, the last major battle of the American Revolution was 1781. It was the Battle of Yorktown. And at the Battle of Yorktown, one of the generals who was there was the Marquis de Lafayette. And Lafayette was 19 years old when he came to America. He becomes one of Washington's major generals. He's a very big deal in America. What he does, he contributes. Washington tells him, your job is to track all of the British officers' movement, most specifically Lord Cornwallis, who was the commander of all the British forces. And so what Lafayette did was Lafayette developed a spy ring. And he would have people go into British camps pretending to, to be there to serve the British. And actually, Lafayette was very anti-slavery, and he actually liked to use black patriots, and some of them who were slaves who signed up trying to get their freedom, whatever the case was, but he would have black people go into these British camps pretending to be escaped slaves, and they would try to gather intel. One of the guys who worked for Lafayette was a guy named James Armistead. James Armistead, Lafayette said, was the best spy he had of all of his spies. In fact, there's two letters worth note from Lafayette to George Washington. The first letter, Lafayette says, there's a brand new spy I have working for me. His name is James. He is the best spy I have. He gives me the best information. So he praises James to George Washington. Well, the way the story unfolds is if you remember the famous American trader Benedict Arnold. When Benedict Arnold tries to sell out West Point, tries to sell out Washington, he finally has to leave and retreat. He goes to the British, and then he becomes a British officer. Well, as a British officer, he leads the British in an attack of Richmond, Virginia. Richmond Falls, James Armistead was from Richmond, Virginia. When his town fell, he was a slave at the time. When his town fell, he said, I, I can't stand watching the British do this. I want to sign up. I want to go fight. And the law in Virginia at that time said, if you fought for one year, you could gain your freedom. His master said, that's fine. You go fight. So he went to go fight. But when he went to fight, he got signed up under Lafayette. Lafayette said, the way you can be the most helpful is if you will be a spy and I can send you into the British camp. You can gather intelligence. You can come back and let me know. I'll send it on to Washington. So Lafayette gets Armistead to sign up as a spy. Lafayette is sent into a British camp. The camp he goes into happens to be the camp of Benedict Arnold. So James Armistead is serving in the camp of Benedict Arnold, and this is the reason he got involved in the first place, because Benedict Arnold attacked Richmond, and Richmond fell. Well, as James Armistead is serving in this camp, he does such a good job serving. Benedict Arnold sees this, this black servant serving the soldiers and says, someone who serves that good should be serving the officers, not the commoners. So Benedict Arnold- That's really convenient, Dad. That. That's really right. convenient for a spot. It's really helpful, right, to be invited into the officer's tent. So he starts serving the officer's tent. Benedict Arnold makes him his personal assistant. So, so James Armistead is now the personal assistant of Benedict Arnold, and he's learning all the plans of the British. He's going back and he's telling Washington. And, and so as Washington is learning these plans, they're now, as Americans, able to start strategically moving troops to the right places at the right times. Well, Benedict Arnold gets reassigned and begins working directly for Lord Cornwallis in Cornwallis' camp. James Armistead is now with Benedict Arnold in the tent of Cornwallis, hearing all of the plans. James Armistead found out that Cornwallis was going to be going to Yorktown, moving him and some of his men to Yorktown. James Armistead then sends word back to Lafayette to say, I just found this out. He's on the move. This might be the chance to capture him. If we capture him, we might get him this revolution. The second letter from Lafayette to Washington, it's really worth going and reading. Lafayette says to Washington, remember that spy I told you who's the best spy I have in all of my spy division? He just told me that Cornwallis is going to your town. And, and your town is a place that we might can capture. We, we can surround it. And if we capture him, we can end the revolution. Washington does just that. Washington moves his troops, they surround Yorktown. They end up winning the Battle of Yorktown. Cornwallis surrenders, and the Americans win the revolution. Here's what is so significant about this. George Washington says because of what they were able to do in Yorktown, it took months, if not years, off the war and saved countless lives. The reason they were able to do that was because of the work of James Armistead. Here's why this matters. Because not only could you argue that James Armistead was part of the creation of what we could call like military intelligence, because he was one of these spy ring guys who was in doing these covert operations. Not only that, if you look big picture American Revolution, the American Revolution started with the death of a black patriot, and the American Revolution ended because of the work of a black patriot. America and all of our history. America and all of our history. What you will discover is the history of America is not just the history of white people. It's the history of all kinds of people who oppose tyranny, 
who worked together with people who didn't always look like them, who didn't always act like them, who didn't always believe what they believed, but they found common ground and they worked together. The men, the women, the Christians, the Jews, the, like all kinds of people. They worked together and they were able to achieve something absolutely incredible. And the reason this matters is because the narrative that we hear today is that America was evil, that all black people were oppressed in America. And I don't mean to downplay because obviously there were moments, there was a lot of bad things America did. But what we hear today, in fact, over the last couple of months, there have been articles that have come out. And it seems like every week new articles come out talking about how bad America is. And America was built on slavery and, 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 and America even fought the revolution because of slavery is what some of these articles claim. There was a U.S. senator who said that actually America invented slavery. <laughs> Okay, I can just tell you as a Christian, the first book of the Bible, you learn about Joseph, right? The guy that had the dreams, the rainbow colored coat. His brother sold him into something, slavery. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that was before America. The second book of the Bible, Exodus. Moses leads the Israelites out of something, slavery. Like, it's either incredibly audacious or incredibly stupid to say America invented slavery. And let's say, let's just say, he didn't know the Bible. Okay, then you have to have the worst world history teacher ever. Let's go with stupid. You thought America invented this? Now, I don't mean to downplay the reality of the situation of American history, but, but this, is, this is how stupid we are now. We are making claims that are totally illogical and are not historically accurate. If you look, for example, at this, one of the things you need to know, America was never a world leader in the global slave trade, ever. The argument today from 1619 is America was one of the biggest leaders and they're the biggest, uh, right, kind of perpetuators of this. And all the bad things America did, that's just not true at all. There's a group of professors who went and they documented from the African slave trade, the North Atlantic slave trade, there was, this went on for roughly 400 years, and in this 400 years, there were 12.7 million slaves taken out of Africa. Now that's awful, it's terrible, it shouldn't have happened. Sure, I agree with all that, absolutely. In the midst of this, they've documented where did those slaves actually go that left Africa, and they've been able to identify the ships that were involved, the nations that were involved, and where those slaves were delivered throughout the world. And, and what I'm going to show you is not even historically disputed. It's just not known very well in most American populace. When you look at where those slaves went, what they discovered is that 43% went to Portugal and Brazil, 24% went to Great Britain, 15% went to Spain, 11% went to France, 5% went to the Dutch, 2.5% went to the United States, and 1% went to Denmark. What does that mean? What we can know is America did participate in something that was very, very bad. But if you're going to say the stupid claim that America was a leader in the global slave trade, you're going to have to show some evidence. And in all of the research I've done and all of the history books I've ever read, I've never seen anybody talk about Portugal or Brazil in the North Atlantic slave trade. That's interesting because the worst people involved is at least by statistical numbers, by the amount of slaves they received. Like it was not America. And here's what you also need to know is that in this era in world history, Every single nation in the world was participating in slavery. Every nation. So America is not the one doing the bad thing. America is participating like every other nation is. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not defending what America did. It's okay to say that America messed up and, and made some mistakes. Because one of the things that we also can point out in the midst of America having some wrongs or evils or sins in her past is America also was one of the very first nations to correct those sins in the history of the world because America was the first nation in the history of the world to actually sign a law banning the slave trade. We signed it on March 2nd, 1807. Some people were like, well, England ended slavery first. England signed their law March 25th, 1807. We signed our law three weeks earlier. So we were the very first nation in the history of the world to ban the slave trade. America was the fourth nation in the history of the world to end slavery. At that time, and we did it in 1865, England ended slavery in 1833, then Denmark, then France, then America. America did it in 1865, the 13th Amendment. But what is significant is there were 128 nations of the world at that time. America was fourth out of 128 nations, which means we still were leading the way before anybody else was doing this. And... We actually pay a higher price in ending slavery in America than anybody else. But even if we talk about big picture, 
Right? If you look at the world today. Hey, Tim, I gotta stop you, man. Hang on. They do this on radio all the time. These guys drop these truth bombs of stuff that you've never heard before. It happens to be on radio every day, and I'm going, wait, 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 back up. Hang on. Nobody copy that. You just reversed the narrative because everything we've been told all year long is America invented slavery. America was the worst with slavery. Two facts that you just had. Can you back up? Yeah. Okay, look. First nation to end, uh, to, to end the slave trade and fourth nation to abolish slavery completely. Why are we thinking we're the worst when we were actually one of the ones leading the way to change this? This is what is crazy. When people don't know history or more specifically, when people don't know the truth, it's easier to believe a lie. And most of us have never learned the truth. We haven't studied the truth. And so we don't even know we're being lied to. We have no idea we're being lied to. But this is what's happening. And this is where if you look at the world today, okay? At the United Nations this year, there were 193 member nations. Of those 193 member nations, 94 of those nations still have not passed laws banning slavery in those nations. Slavery still exists today in the world. Right, human trafficking, sex trafficking, literal slavery still exists today. And it's estimated there's more than 40 million people that are legally enslaved in those nations today. In Africa, there's 9.2 million slaves. In China, there's more than a million slaves. We can go around the world. Slavery is still a way of life in many nations, as evil as that is. In the midst of all of this, there is a global slave index. And that's what this picture is showing, where slavery is the worst. But they also identify the nations doing the most to oppose slavery. And you might not see it very well because it's a really small image, but the number one nation opposing slavery is the Netherlands. The number two nation in the world opposing slavery is the United States of America. Even today, America does more to oppose slavery than almost any other in the world. And here's why this matters. Because when you look at context, one of the things that you can know is that in America, we started legal opposition to slavery before any other nation in the world. In America, we paid a higher price ending slavery than any other nation in the world because slavery was ended at the end of the Civil War where the 600,000 lives were lost. And at the end of this, slavery was ended in America. And America also is a nation that has more to oppose slavery than virtually any other nation in the world today. What does that mean? America has one of the best records of the anti-slavery of any nation in the world. And I will go one even further that the 1619 project has not done a good job highlighting. If we look at America, I would argue we would not have America without the contribution of black patriots. Whether we talk about the American Revolution, the War of 1812, the Civil War, this is one of the things we have lost, the fact that America was not merely a white nation among other white nations. America has always been a diverse nation. There's always been diverse patriots, people that fought for freedom. And I could go through dozens, if not hundreds, of black patriots that most of us have never heard of. But just because we don't know the truth doesn't mean that the story we are hearing is accurate. Right. We are being lied to. And as Christians, as Americans, as patriots, it's time for us to say, you know what? I'm not sure I'm going to believe all this anymore. I'm going to start doing a little research. Because America, contrary to what people say now, let me point out, America is not now, nor have we ever been a perfect nation, ever. America is not perfect. America has made mistakes. But one of the great things about America is America has corrected those mistakes faster than almost any other nation anywhere else in the world. And the reason we corrected those mistakes is because there was always the influence of the church, of Christians, of the Bible, where people saw some things in the wrong and said, oh, we shouldn't be doing that anymore. You pick any atrocity you want in American history, any atrocity. You pick the atrocity, and I will ask the question, how did that atrocity end in America? And the answer is always the same. The answer are the Christians who stood up and said it has to stop. America is different. And America is exceptional because of the impact Christians have had on this nation, including, contrary to what the 1619 Project says, America has been one of the best anti-slavery nations in the history of the world.